Hello and welcome to another Change of Directions. I'm Nicole Scott and I'm joined with Don Dahlman. How are you doing today, Don? Hello, Nicole. I'm doing very fine. How are you? I'm pretty good because this morning we spent uh, with ZF at their Digital ZF Aftermarket at, uh, what is it, Auto Mechanica 2021. Yes. And we focused on something that you and I find incredibly interesting, commercial vehicles and logistics. And I know that everyone finds it interesting, but you and I do. <laughs> no, I think it's like an overseen thing because like i mean come on logistics are super important we all especially like in corona times we all ordered online and we all expect that everything is coming like the same day or the next day and we don't have to work for like two weeks until something is, is shipped to us and so logistics have changed a lot in the last couple of years means more cars on the road more vans on the road more trucks on the road it's like the software the digitalization and everything and you have to say what I learned also this day that a lot of these transport companies have good logistics, have good software, but a lot of have not. And what I think is really important for everyone to understand is that the com the commercial vehicles up upgrade and update a lot slower than passenger cars. So if you look at when, say, um, a big semi trailer uh, will get a new model like fundamentally a new model, like not the one they release every year, like a base reconstruction, a car will take four to seven years, whereas a truck will take eight to 12, right? So the life cycle of one of these um, big commercial vehicles is incredibly long. So it's not like the commercial vehicle industry has the chance to iterate quickly or as quickly as the passenger cars. So the digital aftermarket is actually incredibly important if this sector wants to become a lot more CO2 neutral. And this is the segment that we need to become CO2 neutral first. Yes, and it's all about efficiency. I mean, in the logistics, everything is about efficiency, even like one little hiccup, uh, as we could see like a couple of months ago with this huge ship that got stuck in the uh, in the Suez Canal uh, that did a hiccup in the whole supply chain worldwide. And there was just one ship. So imagine what happens when a fleet of trucks is not running or something. So efficiency is Im extremely important and still the digital market for uh, logistics is very fragmented. Yeah, and so the, a lot of the solutions are not yet that intelligent to tackle these inefficiencies. So learning about uh, different hardware software solutions that can be placed into commercial vehicles afterwards to create a new digital infrastructure where there wasn't one before is incredibly important because we don't want to see um, a big tractor trailer go out half empty or a quarter empty. That's something we definitely don't want. No, but, but which is still the case. One out of three trailers are still empty when they're driving around uh, on the highways or from A to B. So this is, this is huge inefficient, not only like because it doesn't make any money because it doesn't transport any goods. It also consumes fuel because it's a load that you have to drag. And this is, this is really not efficient. So you need solutions, digital solutions. And ZF, as we learned today, is working on that, not only as ZF, but also, which I found very interesting because, you know, I'm writing for a startup magazine since a couple of years. They're working together with startups and they have their own accelerator and they try to find solutions and they know that startups are often more agile in their development and have like also different ideas because they come from the outside or they're made from or they, they, they've been founded from uh, someone who worked in the industry and said, hey, I can make it better, but I can't do it like in my own in the company. I have to do it in my own company, et cetera, et cetera. So startups are really important and because they digitalize the whole thing. Yeah. And when we're looking at efficiencies, it's interesting to hear that 20% of the operating costs for any truck or bus is fuel. So any small adjustment can actually lead to a massive increase in profit and a massive saving of CO2 for the environment. This is also down to like the driver sometimes. So uh, what I also learned, I didn't know that they do that, but, but uh, ZF uh, offers um, software solutions and retrofitting uh, connectivity solution for buses. 
so that you have this live GPS. So where is my bus? Uh, you can check the routing. You can check also how is the driver uh, behaving? Like is he's uh, is he driving too fast, too slow? You can like talk to the driver and adjust his driving style uh, because sometimes you know, as we all know, sometimes we drive too quick or we we're not driving efficient enough. And it's good to have a program that tells you, hey, um, you're not efficient enough. Please lower your speed or be more quicker or something like like that and they offer the solution which i found interesting because when you think of that f it seems to be like a tier one supplier that delivers delivers hardware like you know brakes and, and machines and everything but not these kind of software solutions you know this zf bus connect was was one of the cool <laughs> things that i that i found from today because they also positioned themselves where it was transportation as a service yeah. Right, this move towards software, this move towards a fundamental rethinking of how a company that exactly you're exactly right done, you know, a brakes provider, you know, they provide parts for the aftermarket, that they're looking at this segment where they're seeing themselves fundamentally as a service provider between, say, digitizing the bus, which was no longer dig dig digitized uh, in the past, right? So providing this. I guess service, right? It's just, it's it's a hardware component, but then this middle ground between when they bring the bus into the digital ecosystem and then managing the fleet, right? This this area right in between is really important, and I found it really interesting that they were looking uh, as at themselves as a service provider in that niche. Being efficient or efficiency and and sustainability is is a, is a key pillar for like a lot of fleets and fleet management, and also like how can I make my? We talked about like how old trucks are these days, and that you don't get a new truck like every year, or every two or three years. So retrofitting with new technology is extremely important. We talked about the uh, what it was called e-trofit from that F yesterday with the buses, where you can retrofit. Um, existing buses with an internal combustion engine, and you can put in uh, an electric engine, so it's 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 more efficient and it's of course more sustainable. But they also like offer other retrofitting uh, stuff like this Opti level, which uh, is a kind of um, electronic controlled suspension for trucks, so that you can lower the truck a bit. So it uh, that helps a lot to. Um, uh, reduce fuel costs because if you have a lower ride height, you know it. It, it just helps to to reduce uh, the amount of fuel you use. So all these things that you can do with with retrofitting your truck that you have now in your fleet is very helpful. I think. I think it's key to try to remember that you, like retrofitting and being sustainable doesn't always have to be more expensive. Right, there are cost savings that come in afterwards. That there will be an, an, an initial spend that may be a little bit pricey or something that you weren't expecting to do. But in the long run, right, I think legislation will push a lot of um, the the industry forward. But I think that the amount of cost savings that you can get from making these moves is something that everyone has to consider. And I think that the key pillar of sustainability is something that we all have to look towards in the future because it's urgent. <laughs> yeah, it's not only that. I mean, ZF does a lot of more. We, we talked al uh, already about it yesterday with the, with the uh, repair or remanufacturing of old parts. And they still do that, of course, also for trucks. So they, they take old parts, they remanufacture them, and they are basically new, which saves a lot of energy and, and it's very sustainable. Yeah, the remanufacturing is actually one of four four pillars about sustainability. So, and I learned this today because like as a kid, you learn about the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. But for commercial vehicles, it's remanufacturing, repair, rebuild, and retrofit. Right, like which I think are four cool R's <laughs> if you're looking at becoming CO2 neutral in the future. Yes, exactly. And they do a lot of more, um, like they have the academy where you can learn new things and also like learn about digitalization and or digitize your, your company and your fleet. So it's like a lot of things that they offer, which I didn't know. Again, I thought it's like they're delivering parts and now they're like a software company and, a, and, and an academy. 
Yeah, and the academy actually runs like full day training workshops on how to transition over and become more sustainable and to adopt a lot of these new practices uh, in into your workshops, because ultimately that's sort of what these past two days have been about, right? How workshops and industry can move forward and gain all of this new knowledge that we're going to need to have in order to become more efficient, digitalize, and also become more sustainable. So we learned a lot today. All right, Don, thanks so much for joining me. It was, uh, it's been a good day learning all about the commercial vehicles. It is, absolutely. I learned a lot and I will like read a bit about it also a bit more. All right. Have a great day, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.